Russia before 1917, an empire stretched across the world. Russia, enormous, mysterious, and complex, had long been a subject of intrigue and suspicion in the West to many outsiders. It was a land shrouded in ancient traditions and an opaque, medieval aura. In the decades leading up to the cataclysmic Russian revolutions of 1917, the image of Russia in the eyes of Western powers, like Britain and France, was one of backwardness and danger. To the British, Russia was not just an enigma, but a potential rival, a looming presence in the geopolitical struggles of the 19th century, and a player in what came to be known as the Great Game in Central Asia. This image, while based on some truths, was vastly exaggerated. In the 19th century, British politicians and the press often portrayed Russia as an uncivilized force, barbaric, violent, and autocratic. This perception was rooted in history, particularly the Crimean War of the 1850s, where Britain, France, and the Ottoman Empire fought to curb Russian influence in Europe. In English satirical cartoons of the period, Russia often appeared as a bare, slow, lumbering, but dangerous if provoked. Yet, behind this caricature lay a vast empire of immense power and potential. Russia's colossal size and influence. What was certainly true was Russia's sheer size, which made it one of the most formidable continental powers in the world. At its height, the Russian Empire sprawled across 22.4 million square kilometers, roughly one-sixth of the planet's landmass. To put this into perspective, Russia's territory today spans 11 time zones, a geographic span so immense that it is almost impossible for the mind to grasp. From the frozen Arctic tundra to the warm shores of the Black Sea, Russia contained an unparalleled diversity of landscapes. This sprawling empire shared borders with 28 different nations and principalities, from European powers like Austria-Hungary to the smaller Khanates and tribal regions of Central Asia. The Russian Navy patrolled more than 40,000 kilometers of coastline, from the Baltic Sea in the west to the Pacific in the far east. The heart of the empire was its vast plains, dominated by arable farmland and the open grasslands of the steppe. Rivers like the Volga and the Don snaked across this landscape, providing the empire's lifeblood for both transport and trade. The people of the Russian Empire, a diverse mosaic. If Russia's land was vast, so too were its people. In 1897, the Russian Empire conducted its first full national census, which counted over 128 million inhabitants. But these were not a homogenous people, the empire was a patchwork of different ethnic groups, languages, and religions. Over 100 different ethnicities could be found within the empire's borders, ranging from Slavs and Tatars to Mongols, Kazakhs, and Poles. Some ethnic groups, like the Slavic Russians, made up large portions of the population, but others, such as the nomadic tribes of the Siberian North, numbered only in the thousands. This diversity presented immense challenges for governance, and it was common for many in the empire to feel more loyalty to their local ethnic or religious community than to the distance are in St. Petersburg. The Russian language, written in the Cyrillic alphabet, was the official tongue of the empire and the most commonly spoken in European Russia. Yet, across the empire, one could hear dozens of other languages, from Polish and Ukrainian in the west to a lute in the far northeast. Religion was similarly diverse, while Russian Orthodoxy, a distinct branch of Eastern Christianity, was the state religion. Millions of Russian subjects practiced other forms of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and even Buddhism. The sheer variety of cultures and peoples within the empire complicated Russian identity itself. As the Tsarist minister Sergei Vitter observed, the idea of a singular Russia was somewhat misleading. There is no such thing as Russia, Vitter said, noting that the empire consisted of Russians, Ukrainians often called Little Russians, and Belarusians White Russians, along with countless aliens. Peoples from the outer regions of the empire 
who had little in common with the Slavs. The Tsar struggled to reconcile this diversity with their desire for a unified and centralized state. An empire frozen in time, Russia's semi-feudal society, despite its immense potential, by the late 19th century, Russia's political, economic and social development lagged far behind that of its European rivals, Britain, France and Germany. The Russian elite, especially the Romanov Tsars, who ruled since 1613, were deeply conservative. They had resisted modernization efforts that swept through Europe during the Enlightenment and the Industrial Revolution. Instead, the Russian Empire clung to medieval structures and values. Perhaps the clearest example of this was the institution of serfdom, a system where millions of peasants were legally bound to the land owned by nobles. These serfs could be bought, sold or traded along with the estates they worked on. Living in small rural communities, most Russians had little contact with the modern world. They farmed using ancient techniques and their lives were controlled by their landlords and the state. By 1850, while Britain and Germany had rapidly industrialized and urbanized, most Russians still lived as serfs. It was not until Russia's humiliating defeat in the Crimean War 1853 to 1856 that the Romanovs recognized the need for change. The war revealed the extent of Russia's backwardness. Its military was under-equipped. Its economy lacked the industrial base to support modern warfare and its infrastructure, railroads, factories and communication systems was primitive compared to the likes of Britain and France. The reforms of Alexander II at Tsar's Gamble. The Crimean disaster shook the Russian establishment to its core and led to the rise of Alexander II, the so-called reform at Tsar. Upon ascending the throne in 1855, Alexander initiated a series of reforms that sought to modernize Russia and pull it into the 19th century. The most famous of these was the emancipation of the serfs in 1861. For the first time in centuries, millions of Russian peasants were granted their freedom, no longer tied to the estates of the nobility. Yet, this emancipation was not without problems. The serfs were still required to make payments for the land they received, often driving them into debt and poverty. While Alexander's reforms aimed to stimulate modernization, they also unleashed waves of social unrest. Many peasants felt the reforms did not go far enough, while others, particularly the nobles, resented the loss of their traditional privileges. Alexander's attempts at reform also spurred political movements, some of which called for more radical changes. The Tsar's assassination in 1881 at the hands of a revolutionary group called the People's Will, symbolized the growing divide between the autocratic regime and a society that was hungry for change. The reigns of his successors, particularly Alexander III and Nicholas II, were marked by increasing repression, as the regime attempted to reverse some of the reforms and suppress revolutionary sentiment. The long road to revolution Russia entered the 20th century as an empire on the brink. Despite reforms, much of the population lived in poverty and calls for political participation were growing louder. The emergence of socialist movements, inspired by Marxist ideas, began to shape a new revolutionary discourse. Workers, intellectuals and peasants alike grew frustrated with the slow pace of change and the heavy-handed repression of the Tsarist regime. Adding to this discontent was the blow of the Russo-Japanese War 1904 to 1905, where Russia's defeat by Japan in a bid for control over territories in East Asia shocked the nation. The loss exposed the incompetence of the Russian government and military, undermining the regime's authority and sparking widespread unrest. This humiliating defeat intensified the growing revolutionary sentiment, pushing the empire further toward the brink. By 1917, after decades of social upheaval, economic stagnation and devastating military defeats, 
the Russian Empire stood on the verge of collapse. What had once seemed like an uncheckable continental giant was about to be torn apart by revolution. <laughs>